Good evening and thank you so much for making time for KTN Weekend Prime tonight. My name is Sophia Wanuna, our sign language interpreter is Maresha Witi. Remember also later on on this bulletin we have Face the Nation and tonight we are hosting CS Sports, Arts and Culture Hassan Wario. He talks about anti-doping efforts in the country. Of course we we'll also talk about the film industry. Will the West get movie be shot in Kenya or elsewhere? We've had some claims uh, attributed to the same so do stay with us. Of course it will be very interesting to catch up with the CS later on on this bulletin. But first up, let's begin with Deputy President William Ruto has told off the opposition about its criticism of state appointments. Ruto accused opposition leaders of analyzing recent appointments from what he called a tribal angle, arguing government appointments are based on merit and competence of the appointees. The Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court has heat out at the government over the appointments of parastatal heads, terming them unconstitutional. The deputy president was at Kapsabit Girls High School where he joined students, teachers and parents to celebrate the school's performance in last year's Form 4 examinations. Faced with criticism from the opposition on the recent government appointments to parastatals and other state agencies, claiming they were tribal, Ruto came out to defend the government. President Uhuru Kenyatta this week appointed former head of public service Francis Kimemia to chair the Industrial and Commercial Development Corporation, ICDC. Former Orange Democratic Movement Chairman Henry Kosge was appointed Chairman, Board of Tourism Fund. Businessman Chris Kirubi was appointed non-executive Chairman of Brand Kenya Board. Former Police Boss Hussein Ali was appointed Chair of the NGO Coordination Board. Mark Bohr will now chair the Board of Kenyatta National Hospital. Other appointments include Jimmy Kariuki to the Kenya Tourism Board, Francis Kuria, Pest Control Products Board, Ronald Osumba, Chairman Youth Advisory Board, Kenya Commercial Bank Chief Executive Officer Joshua Oigara will chair the Energy Regulatory Commission, Jackson Ole Monique chairs the Ewasongiro South Development Corporation, Athlete Paul Tergat was appointed to the Kenya Academy of Sports Council, former Provincial Commissioner Francis Bayer was appointed to chair the Kenya Literature Bureau and Betty Radier will now chair the Board of Tourism Research Institute. The opposition insists the appointments do not reflect the face of all communities in Kenya as is demanded under the Supreme Law. Kati ya watu saba, ine kutoka kwa jamii ya uhuru, tatu kutoka kwa jamii ya rutu. Na hiyo ndiyo umoja wa injia Kenya kwa au wawili. Alafu wakaona haya, wakachukua musomari moja wakaongeza hapu. This is not the first time President Uhuru Kenyatta has been faulted over appointments in government. Last year, the president was accused of flouting the constitution by making state appointments that disregarded gender balance, marginalized communities and regional balance. Just look at the names of the people who have been appointed and ask him which nation, which United Kenya are you talking about? Early last year, disappointed Kenyan youth also expressed their anger at government appointments using the hashtag recycled politicians when who were appointed politicians who had been voted out in the 2013 general elections to key positions in government. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. The Jubilee Alliance says it is ready for a development audit in 2017 by Kenyans, exuding confidence that its re-election bid will be boosted what uh, the coalition has achieved over the last uh, four years. The coalition now wants the opposition leaders to also be ready to account for their development record based on number of years they served in government. <laughs> Deputy President William Ruto has returned to Kericho County barely two weeks after the grueling campaign ahead of the Kericho senatorial by-election that saw Jubilee's Aaron Choriot carry the day. Addressing supporters at the Kericho Teachers Training College, Ruto said he is grateful that despite the fierce challenge from the Independence Party Kanu, Jubilee prevailed. Mbali na yale mambo yote yalitokea hapa na fitina nyingi na mambo ya uongo nyinyi mlidhibitisha ya kwamba mnaelewa siasa ya Kenya inaenda namna gani na mnaweza kutofautisha siasa ya porojo na serikali inayofanya kazi the leaders were quick to criticize their challengers whom they accused of being the enemy within don't waste your time telling us jubilee has not done this jubilee has not done that jubilee has taken time to do this Kwani wewe una plani yako ya kuambia wananchi watafanya utafanya kitu gani? Wakaji wa Kericho walizungumza kwa sauti moja na akasema kama kuna chama ambaye inaunganisha na haibagui jamii inataka tu Kenya moja ni chama cha Jubilee 
na ndipo wakaipa kura kwa wingi sana si kulala paka siku hiyo tarehe saba ndio siku ya kwanza wakati tumesikia matokeo ndio nilipata usingizi nikalala we must stick as a community behind the leader that the people have chosen sisi kule kinivi tulikubali kule manini tulikubali tunawaomba hawa wakubali ile maneno ya geometric progression na wenye wana calculate geometric progression watu hapenda shule sasa unashangaa ile hesabu ya kina ile hao wengine on national politics the jubilee battalion says it is ready for the 2017 political contest with the arrivals in code and we want the contest of 2017 to be a contest of what has been done about what agenda we have so that we can be compared with our competitors just like during the by election campaigns tna mps in the ruling jubilee alliance were conspicuously absent at the homecoming ceremony Duncan Hemba, KTN News. The Council of Governors has accused the national government of engaging in a covert campaign to kill devolution. The council says the national government still controls funds meant for devolved governments, even after transferring key infrastructural functions to county governments. Led by Chairman Peter Munya, the Council of Governors says it will continue with its push for a referendum to have at least 45% of the national revenue shared by county governments. A long, long discussion recently in Sagana, but it looks like the national government was using that forum to rubber stamp what they had already decided because they did not see the ground. The national treasury still presented the same figures, and therefore, together with my chairman, we will continue uh, to push for more resources for county government so alafu ukija huku unatafuta kule utachimba bow na hiyo ni kazi ya county sababu ulikaa na pesa ya county na la upatie county waende wenyewe watafute pale watashimba bow ndani wako karibu na itarahisisha kazi na itatumia gharama mingi wewe unataka kutoka mpaka Nairobi utumie ndege huyo speed na na entrance kubwa hapa kitafuta pale utashimba bow Kenya was expected to join the rest of the world in marking the 2016 Earth Hour tonight. The event marked annually during the month of March encourages individuals and communities to turn off their non-essential lights for an hour as a symbol of their commitment to ensure global warming is reduced. Katie and Stimus here now has that report. Tonight, by a mere flick of your light switch, you could be joining in a worldwide campaign meant to create awareness on matters climate change. What you may not be aware of is that today is Earth Hour Day, a day first marked in 2007 in Sydney, Australia, initially coined as the Lights Off event, an event meant to have you switch off your lights for one hour and replace the use of hydrothermal and geothermal sources of energy with renewable ones like solar power all in an effort to muzzle the ill effects brought about by climate change. This year's event will have Nairobians join the rest of the world for the fourth time since participating in the movement back in 2012 and the sensitization exercise is being propelled by mostly the youth who gathered in front of the Hilton Hotel earlier today in anticipation for switching off all lights from between 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Saturday night. Mostly it is, it's involving the youth, the youth, and uh, I think it's going to be important because it's going to change people's minds of what they think about the environment. This year's Earth Hour, themed on the basis of shining a light on action towards climate change, a theme reminiscent of last year's COP21 talks on climate change that saw the African delegation cry foul over the continent's plight following suffering from ill effects of global warming apparently being swept under the carpet. Analysts believe that indeed the continent has suffered the most following the impact of global warming while still contributing the least compared to other continents in terms of gas emissions. Yes, it is true Africa is the most affected, but we can only be able to get ourselves out of that by rallying ourselves and the, the organizations uh, towards uh, uh, climate action. 
and the action can only begin with the individual come up to uh, whatever organizations uh, one is working with and the organizations that support this including the government have a stand that it is us who can be able to resolve that problem. And so it is through such events organized by the Worldwide Fund for Nature and its partners that activists hope they can impact change one participant at a time. It's my first time to have come across the Earth Hour, but in my own initiative I've been working on the environment as on my own, like uh, planting of trees, because I love trees so much. First of all, I'm here to learn, to be able to help others who couldn't make it here. The initiative having over 100 signatures by 2 p.m. Saturday, hoping to pile pressure on stakeholders to do something about global warming. It all starts with them, with you as a person, as an individual, about the conservation of the environment. You really don't have to do something big like uh, cleaning up the whole streets just by dropping a piece of paper at the right place like a dustbin. That's a start. So tonight, you are encouraged to switch off your lights for one hour in solidarity with a cause that hopes to see more use on solar energy to reduce global warming. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. And you still have about 15 minutes to 9.30 where that earth hour is coming to an end to be part of that campaign. And of course, always to practice that uh, switching off non-essential lights, whether it's at work or at home. In other news, in October last year, we aired a story of a woman in Machakos County whose car was being preserved in her stomach. The woman, Rose Zambula, passed on yesterday at her home. Now, she had been in that condition for a period of five months because her family could not raise enough funds required for an operation to reconstruct her skull after she was involved in an accident in India. We, the Standard Media Group, had opened an Mpesa pay bill number to help Rose raise the funds she needed to undergo the operation. While well, wishes managed to rise, uh, raise close to half a million shillings, Rose was scheduled for a doctor's appointment on Tuesday, 22nd, but she passed on. Heard the story. Uh, we got at least people came in and started helping. Uh, there are these who call, promise to help, go underground. Others help. So in the process, we raised at least about half a million immediately after you heard the story. And she was very weak. She could not stand the operation. Then after Naindo, we booked, uh, we booked for clinics in Kenyatta Hospital, whereby we started late last year, and we were booked for 9th February. So 9th February, we took her to Kenyatta Hospital. They checked her. They did some checkups, and then after that they booked her again for 23rd, the 